one of the activities that Slater and Gordon has been proud to be involved in over the last few years through the Slater and Gordon Foundation is the establishment of a not-for-profit um, youth legal centre that works out of the Sunshine um, Youth Junction. And one of the things that's been you know, really important about the development of that is the partnership between um, Slater and Gordon and the Foundation, the Youth Junction, um, the police in the local community, the Victoria University of Technology, which runs its clinical education program um, through that, that centre, uh, and the various um, other agencies. And I think one of the things that, for those of us that have been involved, that, that has really been quite astounding and has opened our eyes is just the extent of the need, particularly in the, in the African com community. So that's certainly something we'll take away from from your address, Paris, and, and work a little bit harder at over the next year or two. Finally, uh, I'd like to, pretty hard acts to follow for Liz, but um, I'd like to introduce the Honourable uh, Liz Beatty, Member for Yoroke and Parliamentary Secretary assisting the Premier in Multicultural Affairs. Uh, Liz was first elected to State Parliament in the 1999 election, and during her time in Parliament she's held a number of positions that have reinforced her strong desire to represent the community. In August 2007, Liz was appointed Parliamentary Secretary assisting the Premier on Multicultural Affairs, a position which she still holds. Liz has been a member of the Law Reform Committee and the Scrutiny of Acts and Regulation Committee, as well as being co-chair of the Anzac Day subcommittee. She was chair of the Women in Water Working Group and is founder of the Parliamentary Friends of Sri Lanka Group. Um, please join me in welcoming Liz. I'd like to begin by paying my respects to the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand, to the people of the great Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. Uh, also, I'd like to acknowledge the, former sp the, the speakers that have spoken already, Andrew Demetrio from the AFL and CEO and chairperson of the Australian Multicultural Council, Andrew Greck, managing director of Slater and Gordon, and Paris Aristotle, Director of Foundation House, and of course, um, uh, they've, both, they've uh, all spoken with a, a passion that is shared uh, by myself for the multicultural community. Um, I'd just like to say before uh, I get into the body of what I want to say that uh, uh, each person that's been up here has identified their cultural background and. Uh, Beatty. Well, I have to say that uh, Beatty is a Scottish name. Um, it's my husband's name. And uh, if you think uh, that it's only the last generation that may have endured suffering, um, don't get my husband's family started on the ethnic cleansing that, cleansing that occurred at Culloden, because you'll find uh, it, uh, you'll be in a five-day conversation. But uh, we're here in Victoria tonight. We're not in Scotland and we're not in uh, Greece. We're here in Victoria, which is home to the most culturally diverse mix of communities in Australia. And in fact, according to the 2006 census, Victorians originate from more than 230 countries. They speak over 200 languages other than English and there are about 120 different faiths practised here in Victoria. So clearly, Victoria is, is multicultural, and clearly, Victoria is very proud of it. However, just as this is diversity is a benefit in which we all share, so it is also our shared responsibility to meet the challenges that differences in language and experience sometimes represent. Access to justice, though not always the stuff of headlines, as we saw tonight with Andrew doing his uh, interview on uh, the grass at Etihad Stadium, but access to justice is not always the stuff that headlines are made of, but it is a very fundamental thing which many people in Victoria take for granted. Yet it sometimes eludes those for whom language can act as a barrier. Opportunities to use legal services to understand legal information fully or to navigate the complexities of court procedure can sometimes be lost in translation. The road to justice seemingly riddled with obstacles. When it often takes a generation for new arrivals to gain full understanding of an unfamiliar legal system, 
there's a lot of people missing out, which is why the Brumby government has long sought to ensure that people from all cultural and linguistic backgrounds are able to participate equally in the civil and the legal process. As part of this, we have funded interpreter services for many years, whether through the Victorian legal aid system or more recently through nearly $2 million worth of services delivered via the Dispute Settlement Centre of Victoria, the Magistrates and the County Courts and the Victorian Equal Opportunities and Equal, Equal right, Human Rights Commission. Meanwhile, the Justice for Refugees program recognises our obligation to ensure that refugees receive culturally and appropriate information about their rights and responsibilities. While family violence, education has been the focus of a $25,000 partnership between the Victorian and the Immigrant Women's Domestic Violence Services. So these are just a couple of examples of the Victorian government's efforts in this area. There will always be work, more work to do, however, and none of, the exclusive, uh, it, none of it is the exclusive domain of governments. We're here today, then, to celebrate Slater and Gordon's latest contribution to this endeavour. Slater, Slater and Gordon is a firm that has always made access to justice core business. It's, it's their core business. It's known as the people's law firm. That, uh, and Slater and, Justice, Slater and Gordon know that the legal profession needs to evolve and to respond to the community it serves. Whether advising injured workers from migrant backgrounds or assisting a person more permanently disabled as a result of medical negligence, this firm is well known for its pro bono legal work as well as for connecting people with social support services where needed. This new, free and confidential national multilingual helpline then recognises the need to provide the first and often first vital call as uh, part of a way that meets the needs of many Australians from migrant and refugee backgrounds. Initially available in Greek, Italian, Mandarin, Cantonese, Arabic and Vietnamese, the aim of the helpline will be to cater to smaller and more emerging uh, communities uh, that don't speak English as their first language. It's a simple and straightforward signal that if we are serious about social inclusion, we have to get serious about giving every Australian access to those things that make for a dignified and equitable life. It's a responsibility that each and every one of us share, but it's not one that we all start, step up to meet. Not all law, law firms, not all governments for that matter, will recognise the value of meeting this obligation. Fortunately, this government, the Victorian government, and this particular law firm, Slater and Gordon, uh, do step up to the plate. And I congratulate Slater and Gordon for providing us all with another source of pride in Victoria's legal profession. I just want to end on a personal note. They often say that you can't relate to people unless you step into their shoes and try to walk a mile in their shoes. Um, several, a couple of years ago, as an adult, I decided to take up another language. And uh, just to make it even more difficult, I decided that the language I wanted to speak, because I have a large Arabic speaking community in my electorate, I decided I would learn Arabic. Um, one of my hobbies uh, when I get time is flying light aeroplanes. I thought for the first, when I had to land an aeroplane by myself for the first time, that that was the most terrifying thing you could do. To take off without your instructor was okay. When you're circling above the airfield and you think, now I've got to land. And I remember the words of my instructor saying, all landings are just crash landings. They're just controlled crash landings. So I circled around and I thought, oh, you know, what am I going to bloody well do? I have to get down sometime or later. And I successfully landed the plane. I thought that was very, very difficult. But I can tell you, when I had to get up 
and say a few words in Arabic. My knees shook, my hands were sweating, I had a trickle right down the back of my neck. Now imagine, imagine what it's like for some new person to come to the country and just try to explain what they need. To go to the shops and get eggs or something like that when it's not in your language, just imagine how terrifying it is. So I can tell you, I subjected myself to that terrifying thing of making a speech in Arabic. The many people that arrive here didn't subject themselves to that. As Paris has said, they have come here in the most appalling circumstances. They've come from war-torn countries. So I say to Slater and Gordon, congratulations Slater and Gordon, more power to your arm. I, like Andrew, hope this is the first of many initiatives you provide for our multicultural community. Congratulations Slater and Gordon.